All right, let's do this. How do you guys like Vienna so far? <laughs> Have you guys do any sightseeing? No? Okay, I was brave enough. I actually went to the old town and see the famous church and a couple of other things, but it's, it's really interesting. It's super, super cold. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about progressive application delivery with Istio, Ambient, and Argo rollout. I'm so excited to be here. And how many of you were in my talk this morning? Okay, a couple of you. Well, thank you so much for showing up again. I appreciate it. I am so sorry. I'm going to tell the story of the house again, if you don't mind. So about 10 years ago, I decided to build a house. And this is the house under the construction back then. Um, what if, you know, as I was building the house, I don't quite like the front porch of my house, right? It's kind of uh, it's kind of boring, right? What if I want a different style? So think about that. What if you are building your application and your application is composed with many services, but at one time of when you look at your application, you're like, well, I don't like this particular portion uh, of my application, which made out of the porch service, and I want to replace it with uh, maybe a version two or version three of my porch, right? How do you do that? A naive way to do that is let's rip out the current porch, right? Let's build the porch uh, version two, you know, after we rip out the first version of the porch. But that has a problem. What if in the middle you don't have a porch, right? That's the entrance of the house. And also you can get from inside of the house, go to the porch, right? So that's what we call in place upgrade, right? Of your services, of your porch service. When you move from one version to two version, you don't necessarily have both of your version coexist. So you wait until your first version kind of drain down and then you have your second version stood up so you don't have a transition instead. Well, assuming you only have one replica, which is my house, I only have one house. Um, so that's kind of a story about how you could potentially have a multiple microservices building an application like a house where you may need to take uh, change into some of your services, like a, de deliver a version two of your services. How do you do that? So that's what this talk is going to be about. Uh, my name is Lin Sang. I'm a head of open source at a small company called Solo.io. How many of you actually know our small company, Solo.io? Okay, nobody? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> awesome, thank you. So I joined Solo.io uh, about three years ago. And prior to that, I worked at IBM for 19 years. So I was a senior technical staff member while I was at IBM, but I decided why not join a startup company. So when I joined Solo, I was like 30th employee. So right now our company has maybe 150 people, but I'm excited to be part of a startup journey. And the back to the house, so the house was located in Cary, North Carolina, which is on the east coast of the United States. Uh, if you conceptualize that, it's somewhere between New York City, Washington, D.C., and Florida along the east coast. All right, um, so now I want to talk to you about service mesh a little bit. So we're going to go through a service mesh quick introduction, and then we're going to go through a quick introduction of Argo, and then we'll jump into a live demo about Argo and uh, service mesh, you know, canary rollout and all that. So um, about seven years ago, I still remember when I go to my very first or second KubeCon, uh, back then when everybody talked about service mesh, uh, it's using a sidecar model. Well, you drag a sidecar along with your application, right? So you basically, when you enroll your application into a service mesh, you have to restart. Then you deploy the sidecar proxy along with your application. You don't need to make any change to your application. However, you do have to drag the sidecar proxy with you. So how many of you are familiar with the sidecar proxy-based service mesh? All right, many of you. Not surprising, right? That's what service mesh has been for the past five, seven years. Um, 
what we are introducing in the Israel community about two years ago is a sidecar list service mesh, where we listen to a lot of users while Istio is complex. The moment sidecar is uh, on my application, my application broke. Look how much CPU and memory that sidecar application is consumed, like more than a third of my entire Kubernetes cluster. And it's just doing that simple function of service how come it consumes so much resources of my CPU and memory? So with all these uh, motivation behind, we started to develop Ambient uh, in upstream about two years ago, and Ambient reaches uh, beta in April this year um, when we had KubeCon in Paris, uh, April, May, uh, April, March timeframe. That's when we started to recommend uh, Ambient in production for our user with caution, and in KubeCon, so like City in November, we plan to announce the ambient to GA. Um, in a nutshell, I want to help you conceptualize ambient. How many of you know what a Kubernetes node agent is? Raise your hand, don't be shy, right? So a node agent is basically an agent running on a Kubernetes worker node, right? So you can think about Kube proxy is a node agent. Um, so in Istio Ambient, we also provide a node agent that handles all the layer four uh, processing, which we call it secure overlay layer. So instead of asking you to drag a sidecar along with your application and restart your application, application, the node proxy is deployed alongside of your application without touching your application, and it handles all the incoming and outgoing traffic for all the pods uh, where the, the node agent resides. Um, so in a nutshell, when your application calls another application, regardless if it's on the same node on, or on different node, it goes through the node agent in, provided by Istio, which we call it a zero trust tunnel because the primary job of the zero trust tunnel, uh, short words is Z tunnel, is to responsible for providing mutual TLS, um, upgrade the connection to from plain text to mutual TLS, provide a trustable identity, uh, provide encryption and uh, security for that application communication. The other important concept of Istio Ambient is called gateway. How many of you know Kubernetes has a gateway concept around for a very long time? Yes? A few of you. So a gateway is typically an entry into your cluster, right? So when you need to expose your application in Kubernetes, you typically uh, connect it to a gateway uh, in your Kubernetes cluster so that um, folks outside of your cluster can connect to your application through the gateway. So the gateway is typically visualized as uh, a way to mediate uh, incoming or outgoing traffic for your entire cluster. That's why it's very common for every single Kubernetes cluster to have an ingress gateway if it's outfacing, if the cluster exposes something outside of the cluster. And in Istio Ambient, we had a concept called uh, a waypoint proxy, which essentially is a gateway for your application. Uh, the scope of the waypoint proxy can be based on namespace or based on services. Uh, so you and the most common case uh, when we work with different teams, we find out each team is kind of like a tenant and where they run their application within the namespace. So we think uh, uh, namespace as a uh, for a scope of a gateway makes sense where well, all your tenant, uh, all the uh, members within that single namespace share a same waypoint proxy. Notice this is very much more efficient than sidecar proxy, right? Because in sidecar, every single of your application would have, pod would have its own sidecar. Well, in this case, your waypoint proxy could be shared uh, by all the pods within the namespace, uh, or you could even share share the entire cluster using a waypoint proxy because some um, community member 
was telling me every single his namespace only have one or two app, and he would rather his entire cluster use one uh, waypoint proxy. So that's possible too. Um, and notice also here um, when you work with sidecar, the sidecar scales together with your application with waypoint because it's running outside of your application. It can scale independently from your application. So in the nutshell, Istio Ambient is really slicing um, the two layers uh, into two layers, the whole mesh function from secure overlay, which is uh, provided by the zero trust tunnel, the no proxy we talk about, and also the layer seven proxy uh, processing layer, which is uh, provided by the waypoint proxy that's also Envoy based, the same as the sidecar. So the layer seven processing layer is very much uh, rich, able to handle all the layer seven and traffic management, security, and observability. One thing really nice about this architecture I want to highlight is in the sidecar case, you can't pick okay, I only need a mutual TLS. I don't care about layer seven uh, processing. I still have to deploy sidecar and expose myself to all the potential Envoy layer seven based uh, CVE. In this case, uh, you may have a cluster where most of your app would be happy with mutual TLS uh, layer four um, function, and you may only have some of your app need the layer seven processing layer. Uh, a little bit of story about why we are doing two layer, right? Why can't we just have per node proxy for every single function? Um, part of the reason is, uh, you know, we want to provide a proxyless mesh, but we do believe uncontrolled layer seven config in a multi-tenancy environment is a outage and also a noise neighbor factor. Envoy are not designed for multi-tenancy, so we don't believe abuse way for multi-tenancy and uh, it would be a very good reason. And in fact, uh, Matt Klein, who is the founder of Envoy, did weighing on that topic too. Now I want to get into Argo CD and rollout. Uh, so how many of you use Argo today? All right, a lot of you, awesome. I, you guys probably know Argo more than me then. So uh, essentially, uh, we're going to talk about uh, creating applications in Argo. So one thing nice about Argo is very declarative, right? You can create um, your application and then Argo would help you realize your application declaratively in Kubernetes. Like in the application, I have uh, rollout objects. I have, I can deploy my gateway, I can deploy my apps, uh, it's very, very easy, and I can check out my rollout status. When I'm doing um, my porch version number two, I can gradually roll out instead of, uh, you know, just uh, um, just roll out immediately, so I can roll out check percentage and all that. So with that, uh, we are going to jump into a demo. So in this demo, we're going to show Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to deploy Kubernetes cluster using K3S, and I'm going to have Istio Ambient already installed on my cluster. I'm going to use Argo CD and Argo rollout in the demo to roll out new versions. I'm going to also uh, have some observability of my deployment through Premises and Kayali. Um, I'm also going to use Flannel as my CNI, but you could potentially use other CNI as well and uh, use SPP uh, provide identity um, for my services. All right, so let's go ahead, get started. Uh, let me just check on the time. All right, and this is my cluster. Um, I already have a client deployed in my cluster. So uh, if I do a zero on my cluster, so you can see I have Istio already installed. I have Kayali, I have Premises, I have the Zero Trust Tunnel we talk about uh, that, me, that handles all the incoming and outgoing traffic on the node. I have Argo rollout deployed. I have Argo CD also deployed that has the application controller and all the components required for Argo CD. What else do I have? Okay, that's about it. Um, so let me go back to the default namespace so you don't have to see a bunch of other stuff. So um, the other thing I want to show you is um, 
I also have a GitHub repository here, which is the Hello World application, which is a very simple application, not as, as fancy as my porch, but it serves a rollout purpose. So in this Argo, um, uh, in this uh, Hello World application, I have a customized that points out I want to use uh, base rollout default as my resources and I'm operating in the default namespace. And uh, let's go to uh, base rollout. Uh, here I also have a customize. Um, and uh, I have uh, actually, let me make one change. Um, so in fact, in this, I'm going to show you guys this uh, in a bit. Uh, so I'm going to comment this namespace.yaml out. Um, because um, disable label space, uh, namespace label transformer, because we're going to show the demo without it first. This is bad on me on my part. I should do this homework before, um, before I start the session. But as you can see, uh, we're going to first deploy this customize uh, with rollout.yaml, um, service.yaml, analysis, and gateway.yaml. And uh, later on, we're going to deploy the namespace.yaml, which uses the waypoint label, which I will touch that on later on. So let's review the resources we're going to deploy. Can you guys see in the back? Is it font good? All right, let me make it a little bit bigger. I'm nearsighted myself, so I always ask, like to ask people, can people see it? It's better, hopefully? Awesome, thank you for that feedback, I appreciate it. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, at the rollout. Actually, look at the service might be more useful. So the first service we're going to deploy is a Hello Stable service. Uh, so that's the Hello World application uh, that we already tested and trusted and going to deploy first. And then the second service we're going to deploy is Hello World Canary service. And we also have a generic Hello World service as an entry point for people calling Hello World. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And we're also going to create a, re uh, a rollout resource. And in this rollout resource, um, we're going to select the Hello World application and we're going to deploy Hello World uh, version one, which is the version, the first version uh, that uh, that's, uh, we trust and it's stable. And uh, this is important. We're going to have a rollout, uh, canary rollout strategy where we specify the Hello World canary is the canary service and the stable service is the Hello World um, stable. And uh, also we have a Alensis template, which I'll show you guys a little bit, uh, which is called Istio success rate. So in this Alensis template, we're essentially doing a check on the Hello World Canary service. And uh, we're going to check to see, uh, let me jump on here quickly. And we're going to check on the premises metric generated by Istio automatically without us needing to do anything in our application. Remember, we pass the service, which is Hello World Canary, and the namespace to the arguments to the analysis template here. And we place a success criteria, which is the result of uh, this is uh, needs to be um, mostly correct. We allow 5% failure rate, right? So essentially what we are saying here, let me close this guy on the right side. Uh, we're saying here is uh, we're looking at Istio request total and the destination service is Hello World Canary and that service should have less than 5%, uh, 500 plus the arrows um, and all the other arrows, uh, all the other response code uh, should be should be good, uh, which means 200. So that's what this uh, query is about. Okay, so we have our analysis template and um, let's see what else is interesting. Oh, the other thing that's interesting is because we're doing canary rollout, we don't want to shift the traffic 100% to version two, right? We want to gradually roll out uh, the traffic. 
So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to define, using the Gateway API, we're going to define the Hello World HTTP rollout uh, using this. And uh, we're going to say, let's do 20% at a time, right? So we want to do 20% uh, of version 2. If version 2 is good, let's progress to 40%. And if that's good, let's do 60, 80, and 100%. So um, let's go to the gateway resource. So in the gateway resource, uh, we are actually specify two gateway resource. The reason is uh, there is a gateway resource that in charge of incoming traffic into the cluster. Um, and then there's another gateway resource uh, for the waypoint, um, which is handles the traffic uh, inside of the cluster. Uh, and uh, there is a simple route object, and in this route object, uh, we're specify we're binding to the uh, the ingress gateway, which is the Hello World gateway. We're also binding to the Hello World service. Um, and uh, when the traffic goes to slash hello, uh, we want to be able to go to either the stable or the canary or a shift um, a percentage between canary and the stable. So that's the gateway resources for. So with that, um, I am going to uh, jump into my Argo. Uh, go ahead, use Argo CD to create the application. So I'm going to call this Hello World uh, Rollout, if I can type. And I'm going to do manual sync, but typically you want to do automatic sync because I'm showing a demo, you know, I can make sure the sync happens at my own pace which is why I'm showing a, a manual sync. And I'm going to use uh, this Hello World project uh, we just reviewed together. Um, and I'm going to point to the head of the branch. And I'm going to point to the overlay, uh, fo uh, overlay folder, which we just reviewed together at the beginning with this uh, simple customize. Um, all right, um, so the cluster information, I'm going to point to my Kubernetes cluster and keep it simple using default namespace. I think that's it. So that should create a Argo application definition. And let's go ahead and sync it. Since I said I want to sync it manually because that way I can control when to get synced. So that should be able to roll out a bunch of things uh, that we just reviewed together. So let's check it out. I think the rollout is still happening. So it should, um, it should create the... Uh, the Hello World service, the Hello World Canary, and the Hello World Stable, and they should create the Elena's template called um, Istio uh, Successful Rate. Uh, let me see if I can enlarge this a little bit so you guys can see it better. Okay. Um, is this better? Oh, sorry, I was clicking on the wrong button. Okay, now it's better. And then I, uh, then we have the Hello World Gateway, which we review together, right? We also deploy, a, um, remember we had the two gateway resources. One is uh, for incoming traffic into the cluster, which is the Hello World Gateway. The other is for mediate layer seven traffic for inside of the cluster, which is through the waypoint. And then we also have our route configuration. So uh, looks like everything is going to be synced soon, hopefully. I'm not sure why it's still out of sync. Um, but I see everything is synced. So let me uh, click on this again, just making sure. Uh, out of sync from head. Um, let me double check. Sync lights again. The only thing I can see out of sync is this uh, default resource not play present, which I think is fine. So I'm going to delete it. Um, delete. Okay, namespace may not be deleted. Okay, um, non-cascading. Okay, looks like I can't delete because uh, I'm using this one, but I'm not going to worry about this one because um, basically uh, if you look at the get uh, namespace default, uh, you can see I have the default namespace, and right now it didn't have any labels, so, which means that none of my application in my default namespace are part of Istio because I'm not indicating anyhow. And also you can see um, the, 
um, the application have been deployed, right? So I have the hollow wood, I have the gateway, I have the waypoint, but it's the, the waypoint are not being used. Uh, the gateway is uh, it's the, the one controls the incoming traffic into the cluster. We have the hollow wood. So let's do some quick testing, just making sure our application is working. So right now I'm calling from the client to the hello world gateway is still slash hello. So even though I'm calling from the client, uh, if my gateway has a low balance IP, I should be able to call the low balance IP. Um, so that works. Uh, and uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to call hello world service, right? Because I should be able to also call hello world all right, so that works too. So that means uh, right now I can call the hello world either through the gateway or I can call the hello world directly, right? So uh, one thing I do want to show you is uh, let me generate some traffic so that I don't have to call this manually. So on the left side, we're going to call the gateway. And uh, on the right side, uh, we are going to call the hello world um, on the 5,000. So, um, because right now, none of my applications are inside of the mesh. What if I deploy a version two? So, uh, right now I have a version two deploy.yaml, which I can show you what it is. So it's basically a version two of Hello World application and uses the version two of the image. So if I deploy the version two of the Hello, you can see it uh, reaches running, right? Okay, it already reaches running thanks to the fast Wi-Fi. You can see if I'm calling from the gateway, it's still version one. But if I'm calling Hello World uh, service directly because it's Kubernetes, right? It's run robin, you got it, <laughs> between version one and version two. So you are seeing 50% um, on your right side. And if I'm calling from the gateway, remember because we have a route object. So let me do a route object uh, review quickly. We had a HTTP route where we specify uh, we want uh, we want um, all the traffic goes to the stable, so that's why it always goes to uh, the version one. So um, let's delete this uh, hello world version two because we want to use Argo to uh, to roll out a new version and do canary rollout precisely based on the the rollout definition we had. So in order for us to do that, it's really simple. Uh, all I need to do is I specify, look, I'm going to set the rollout image from version one to version two. So you can see I'm changing my images to version two here. And uh, I'm going to actually, before I do that, I need to do one more thing. Um, I'm going to enroll my application to the mesh. Um, so to enroll my application to the mesh um, so that the traffic control can work properly through the waypoint proxy in addition to the gateway. So in order to enroll my application to the mesh, the only thing I need to do is uh, in addition to create the namespace, but I need to modify the namespace. There is um, this magic label, istio.io slash data plane mode ambient. So that's how you, I enroll the, the default namespace into ambient. And uh, the other label is to ask Istio, hey, not only I want to enroll the default namespace into ambient, I want this particular namespace also use uh, the waypoint that's already been deployed. Remember we talk about we already have the waypoint deployed, but we're not using the waypoint unless you especially tell Istio I'm going to use it. Um, so to enable that, the only thing I need to do is um, uncomment out this and I'm going to go here to say enable ambient and waypoint. And then I'm going to push out the code. Hopefully it works. So basically that pushes the code to my, um, to my uh, GitHub repo, which we should be able to see it right here. Uh, we should see enable ambient waypoint, that's now. And now I'm going to issue a sync onto um, the Argo here. And uh, hopefully 
I will be able to go back to the namespace here. Remember before we look at the namespace default configuration? Uh, ta So we do have this label applied, right? So that's all through Argo and customize uh, that I tell Argo, now I want to be uh, declaratively, I want to be the namespace to use ambient and use waypoint proxy. All right, so now we're ready to roll out our new version of the application, uh, Hello World V2. So uh, once it's rolled out, you're going to see the version 2 deployed immediately. It's running, and uh, we're going to see 20% traffic goes to version 2 for both of these because we have the route configuration happens uh, not only on the ingress gateway, but also on the waypoint. Now, if I do Kubernetes uh, rollout and check the status, sorry, what did I do? <laughs> sorry, I did something I wasn't, uh, I wasn't intended. So hopefully that wouldn't inter interrupt the rollout much. I restarted the Argo rollout parts of accidentally. So I'm supposed to do a get rollout on the Hello, um, Hello World rollout. And you can see I have version one as the stable and version two as the canary. And right now rollout is at the third step. So that means 40% goes to canary, if you remember our definition, and 60% goes to the stable, which should be reflected at the bottom below. So you can see on uh, this uh, seven, six, uh, and five, seven is the stable and seven, six, hello world is the canary version. So right now it's like a 60% goes to Canary. Um, if I go here and do a, um, do a route configuration, right? Because I can go here and watch out my route configuration. You can see route was valid and I'm doing 40% on stable and 60% on Canary, which matches uh, what we see here. Um, so um, rollout is happening automatically, right? It's not as fancy as replacing my, uh, my porch service, but as you can see, the new version of the Hello World was rolled out as we planned in the rollout um, YAML file where we said 20, 40, 60, and 80. And, um, and we should see the rollout complete very soon. What's nice about this is uh, once it's complete, right now we are 80%. So once it's hit 100% uh, and all the tests passing, we do check out uh, it's your request total on the destination service for uh, Hello World Canary. Make sure that Alanis is template. Remember we review together. Um, that needs to continue to pass. So um, basically this Alanis is template uh, testing the rollout throughout, uh, making sure the rollout can be progressed to the next stage uh, with 5% or less error. And if it's good, it waits until uh, 30 seconds uh, and then continue to the next phase. All right, so let's check out how our rollout is going. Looks like everything is um, version two. So I would expect um, the version one to scale down, which is what we see here. And on the route configuration, I would expect everything goes to the stable because the canary version, which is version two, is promoted to be stable. Uh, so that's 100% of the weight. And, uh, and the Hello World version one is gone, right? Because that starts with five something and version two is seven, six. Uh, that's what I remember. So we did a successful rollout and um, you may be wondering, what's the metric? So I, how do I visualize this? So I want to show you guys that next. Um, so in order to see the metrics, I want to open up our premises. Uh, remember we were doing test on request total, right? That's what we did. So if you execute this, uh, you can see, let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Um, so let's check out, um, so for instance, uh, this uh, is uh, a, a request from the gateway, Hello World gateway uh, to the Hello World service. And uh, let's find one that's um, from the client, which is our current client. 
And this is goes to Hollywood uh, Gateway. Uh, this is Hollywood Stable. Well, it's my Canary service. Let me do a search. Okay, so this one goes to the destination of Canary. Um, yeah, so so that's uh, the one we can see. Response code is two hundred. Uh, goes to uh, the Canary service. Um, and uh, that's the premises metrics generated by Istio without you needing to do anything. Uh, remember here, by the way, we don't have any sidecar and the hello world I deployed uh, 10 minutes ago or 12 minutes ago stays running, right? There is no restart. And one last thing I want to show you is the Kayali dashboard, right? Um, so Kayali is an open source project started by Red Hat and it allows you to visualize your services and your applications easily. So I'm going to enable um, traffic animation and security. So, um, all right, so let's see what this does. Uh, it's a little bit harder to see, sorry. Okay, maybe that's better. Um, so essentially uh, what's uh, showing here is as a client, I can call Hello World directly, or I can call Hello World through the gateway, right? So when it's through the gateway, it goes through the gateway and uh, goes to latest. Um, here, um, I think I'm showing, uh, I can potentially show the waypoint proxy as well if I choose to. So if the traffic is mediated by the waypoint, it goes through the waypoint before it goes to the Hello World service. So not only I was able to use um, Kubernetes Gateway API, control how my traffic is shifted, I'm also gaining uh, mutual TLS um, on my application communication with a Spiffy assigned identity. I'm getting HTTP based uh, traffic and also TCP based traffic. So from the gateway, I would be able to get HTTP based traffic because the gateway is based on Envoy. Um, uh, but I would also, otherwise I would at least get uh, the HTTP based traffic uh, from either the waypoint or the gateway. So as you can see, you know, we can visualize of what's happening. Uh, we were able to roll out successfully our version two of the application, and uh, we were able to, you know, gain metrics to visualize what's going on. So that concludes uh, the end of my demo. Uh, I want to recap quickly on what you have seen, right? Uh, so is, before we enroll any of our uh, uh, pods into uh, Istio Service Mesh, we were able to, from our client, reach out to Hello version 1 or version 2, whether it's reaching out to them directly or reaching out them through the ingress gateway. After we enable the namespace with ambient and uh, indicate for the namespace, all the services in the namespace, we want to use the waypoint proxy we deploy. Now we were able to have all the traffic mediated by uh, Istio's Z tunnel and waypoint proxy. So when the client uh, calls a uh, hello world, it would go through the waypoint proxy who can shift the traffic according to our uh, route configuration, whether it's 10%, 20%, 30% uh, before the rollout uh, fully complete to 100% to version two, or uh, the client can call uh, the, in, the ingress gateway, which would um, send the traffic to Zero Trust Tunnel uh, before it kept, uh, the request was sent to the final destination. So you get um, mutual TLS between uh, these connections between client and server, and also you got traffic shifting, and potentially you could do like resiliency and a bunch of other things that Service Mesh provides. Uh, these are a, fish, uh, a couple of resources to help you get started if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Argo rollout with Istio, Ambient, uh, Kubernetes Gateway plugin, and um, and this is also a repo used for my demo. Uh, it's just Linsong Hollow Wood. 
And this is what the house uh, looks like at the end <laughs> with the porch and everything. And that QR code uh, goes to the demo of the Hello World. If you are interested in practice that yourself, uh, it's a fun demo to go through, uh, particularly with Kubernetes Gateway API. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, let you know, if you go through the demo, the Kubernetes Gateway require uh, a little bit more setup on the Argo uh, rollout site. Uh, so there special documentation provided by the Argo team. So you have to make sure it's config to use uh, the Kubernetes Gateway API plugin. Uh, with that, I think that's the end of my talk. I'll have the site uh, QR code here. If you guys are interested, I'm open for questions. That's a, yeah, that's a great question. So remember we talked about the house and the porch service. I, I could delete my porch and replace with version two. With Canary, what this allows is you have your version one of your porch coexist with version two, and you kind of shift to the traffic uh, gradually to... Yeah, but the nice thing is that's only a temporary, right? You deploy both of them uh, coexist temporarily, not permanently. Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. So we talk about this a little bit, right? In the node. Uh, it's this guy here. We talk about the node proxy, right? So that's the zero trust tunnel uh, we deployed uh, on each of the worker nodes. So that's running as a Kubernetes daemon set on that particular node and captures all the incoming and outgoing traffic on the node. Okay, I get it. How do you manage like the CPU and memory? Are you uh, talking about? Yeah, that's a great question. I believe um, in Kubernetes, there is a limit of like uh, a certain, I think it's 110 per pods per node. So there is a limit. It's not like you can deploy thousands of pods on a particular node. So that's a limit of Kubernetes. Okay. Oh yeah, so that I actually talk about in my early session a lot about zero trust and access policy. So the foundation of uh, building by service mesh is you have trustable identities. So we can build access policy based on the trustable identity. So I did a talk, some of you were in my talk early on, on how do you do access policy based on your uh, identity in Istio. Oh, I forgot one thing. Remember I took a selfie before we start? If you enjoy my session, I would appreciate you raise up your hand so I'll take another selfie. <laughs> all right, let me do another one with you all. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm here for any question you guys have. I know I'm a few minutes over, but I hope you guys enjoy the session and enjoy Vienna tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys being here.